Hi folks, it's Benji with Howard Piano, and today we're going to be talking about tuning levers. So let's jump right in. Tuning lever technical, an exploration of tuning levers. Tuning levers are the essential tool in the craft of piano tuning. Tuning levers are specialized tools used by piano technicians to adjust the tension of piano strings, facilitating accurate pitch adjustment. They are designed to leverage mechanical advantage for efficient tuning processes, ensuring each note is stable and accurately pitched. The tuning lever is crucial for achieving the desired pitch and stability in pianos. It is a vital tool for the technician. Proper use of the lever contributes to the overall sound quality of the instrument and prolongs the life of the tuning pins and pin block. They come in a variety of materials, sizes, and styles. There are four main parts to the tuning lever. The handle, the shaft, the head, and the tip. The handle is joined to the shaft by a furl or a collet chuck on extension levers. The shaft is joined to the head by tap and die threads, which vary by manufacturer. Tuning levers that are all one piece means the head and the tip cannot be changed from the handle. A two-piece lever is required in order to have interchangeable tips. The evolution of piano tuning levers reflects advancements in design and functionality. Shedding light on their historical significance is essential to understanding modern tuning levers. In the early days of piano tuning, levers looked more like a hammer. This is where the term tuning hammer comes from. These tools often included removable stringing hooks used for making the loop and braided end of the single strings on early keyboard instruments. As pianos grew in complexity, tuning lever designs began to evolve to meet new challenges. Innovative lever designs allowed tuners to achieve more accurate adjustments, greatly increasing and enhancing tuning efficiency. Certain historical tuning levers gained recognition for their design and effectiveness, such as the Hale tuning lever, patented in 1885. You can see to the right there, there's the original Hale patent. These levers featured an extendable shaft with two-piece interchangeable head and tips, that were double square broached or star shaped. This allowed for eight points of contact on a standard square tuning pin. The two piece head allowed technicians to carry an assortment of tip sizes as opposed to a variety of heads with fixed tips. Tuning pins of the 19th century square piano were situated in the back of the case. The addition of an extendable shaft and tuning levers helped make this area more accessible. Even though this feature was originally intended for the square piano and the square piano is no longer manufactured, Levers with this feature are still widely available due to the rigidity that they offer. And here's some pictures of historical hammers. In the top left, we've got a square grand piano. In the top right, there's some ivory handled T levers, which is, is pretty neat. And um, we've got a few other T handles here, some old English style. Uh, the harpsichord hammer on the far left here, that's an old harpsichord hammer. And then down here on the bottom, we have a T handled, almost like a multi-tool. And you see on the bottom here, it has a little saw blade attachment for it. So, you know, that's, that's pretty neat. Modern piano tuning levers feature advanced designs and materials that enhance usability and performance, reflecting a significant evolution from their historical counterparts. Today's tuning levers are ergonomically designed for better grip and control. Many feature materials and designs to provide increased feedback from the pin, making the tuning process more efficient for technicians. Modern tuning levers are commonly made from materials such as steel, carbon fiber, and high strength alloys. This ensures both durability and precision. The choice of materials is largely a matter of personal preference and manufacturer dependent. Although there are weight and rigidity factors that must be taken into consideration when considering a new type of tuning lever. Contemporary tuning levers differ significantly from historical versions in both design and material. Modern levers provide ergonomic advantages that historical hammers lacked, leading to improved comfort for tuners during extended use. Historical pianos were not under as much string tension and the pianos had less torque due to the rest planks or the pin blocks being constructed of softer wood than today's pianos, often made of beech wood. The mechanical advantage required to turn the tuning pin in the pin block was less than a modern piano. Hence, the T-style levers fell out of favor when American companies started using hardwoods, specifically layers of hard rock maple, for their pin block. They required a sturdier hammer with greater mechanical advantage on the tuning pin. This page is just a link to a bunch of different manufacturers of tuning hammers. Um, you have us, of course. You've got Casado, Levitan, Rayburn, Falk, Canoptics, Ergo, Mother Goose, AMS, Schaff, Yawn. It, there's, there's several out there. I just included the links so that you can kind of explore and peruse on your own time. We offer a lot of the more traditional craftsman style. We have the extendable shaft. Uh, you know, prices range in hammers anywhere from, you know, $40, $40 for, you know, a, a basic kit all the way up to, you know, $1,000 for a custom made hammer. So there's just such a wide range. Of, of price considerations that, you know, I just really wanted you to be able to take it upon yourself and, and do your own research. So I encourage you to do so. 
and there's a lot of options out there right now, and hopefully there'll just be more options in the future because we can never have too many tuning hammers, right? And uh, moving on, we've got types, tips, and techniques. This section discusses the different types of piano tuning levers. So there are primarily six types of tuning levers. The T lever, pictured up here in the top left, the gooseneck lever in the top right, the extension lever right below the gooseneck, the impact lever, which is right here, the keys impact lever, and then you have the factory tuning hammer, which is here on the right side. And then you have the Craftsman or L-shaped lever on the bottom. And the L-shaped lever is the most common and prominently used in modern piano technology. Heads. So let's talk about the heads for a minute. I get a lot of questions about the head angles, and let's just dive into it. The head is the part of the tuning hammer that attaches to the handle and the shaft. It is tap-threaded and screws onto the end of the handle, which is die-threaded. The angle of the head determines to what degree the handle will extend away from the tuning pins. Head angles are typically available in 5, 10, or 15 degree angles. With some manufacturers like Casado, he offers a 12 and a half. I know that Levitan has a 7 and a half. Levitan hammers are a little bit different because they're actually welded. So they're not tap and dyed, they are welded. The head is welded to the shaft. Um, and those, those are offered in 7 and a half degrees. But for for the most part, most hammers are 5, 10, or 15. And uh, the 5 degree head angle will put the tuning hammer the closest to the tuning pins. The 15 degree angle will extend the handle further away from the pins. You can also get the heads in different lengths. The longer the head is, the further the handle will be away from the tuning pins. Tips. The tip is the portion of the tool that screws onto the head, and it fits over the tuning pin. The portion of the tip that goes over the pin is usually a star shape, which is designed to fit on the square pins. The star shape facilitates more positions on the tuning pin with the hammer, eight positions in total. The tips are available in different sizes. The number two size tip is the most common and will fit most modern tuning pins on nearly all pianos, about 90%. The number one size tip is a, is a bit smaller and is designed to fit tuning pins that are, that are smaller. This would apply to mostly older European style pianos or historical pianos pre-World War I. The number three tip is for larger or oversized pins, such as with pianos that have been restrung or restored with an oversized pin. This slide here, this is the manufacturer threads per inch compatibility, and this is very much still a work in progress. Uh, this is the information I've kind of been able to gather in my research so far. The AMS Shaft, Hale, and Toffian tips are all 8th inch NPT or national pipe thread, 27 TPI, which means threads per inch, tapered pipe thread. And so what that means is that on the shaft, so here you have the handle, here you have the shaft, and here is the part where the head connects. If you can see, it's very slightly tapered, so it kind of has a conical shape. That's what I mean by 8th inch NPT 27 TPI. It's that part right there. Now, the tip is a 3 8 inch 30 TPI. And what I mean by that is that this tip here, this is a number two Watanabe tip on a Levitan utility hammer. This right here is 3 8 inch 30 TPI. That's what I mean by that. So just make sure that your tips are matching up with the kind of hammer that you have, right? Yawn is a kind of special example. They have male tips, so they actually screw in. Uh, I don't have an example to show you. I wish I did. But the, the male, it's a male threaded tip, so it actually screws into a recess that is in the head. Um, and those are 10 millimeter by one is the metric thread count of those. So moving on, if you, if you all have any information about these different thread patterns and tips, I'd love to add it. All right, hammer techniques. Proper usage of tuning hammers involves a great deal of patience. Each person will devise their own practice and become more familiar with the hammer through persistence. A valuable resource is Ken Burton's book, Different Strokes. And uh, Fred Sturm of the PTG was kind enough to compile a PTG thread post into the following blog archive, which is linked below. Hammer technique is, is something that just takes it, you, it's unique to every individual. You really just have to put it into practice. I can't explain to you the best procedures for doing it because you'll just have to figure it out um, through patience, lots of patience and practice. So conclusion and future trends. Piano tuning levers have evolved significantly, blending historical craftsmanship with modern innovation. Recent advancements include the introduction of EDM, or electrical discharge machining technologies, for fabricating tuning tips. Currently, Casado's Prestige Tips and Rayburn's Pro Tips are the only tips being manufactured with EDM to my knowledge. 
Traditional tuning tips are made using a horizontal or vertical broaching machine. A double square brooch is the type of brooch that makes the star pattern on modern tuning tips. So the future of tuning levers, what do we think it's going to entail? A um, couple things. Uh, the future of piano tuning levers may involve smart technology integration with connected devices enabling real-time tuning adjustments. An ETD embedded tuning lever may not be that far in our future. New and innovative materials may emerge that make us challenge our traditional methods of fabrication. And I'd like to know, you know, in the comments below, what do you believe the future holds for p piano tuning levers? Here's the Works Cited page. I want to give a special thanks to Martin Shepard. Um, a lot of the photos for this presentation came from his website. If you haven't been there, it's the first link on the Works Cited page. And I highly advise you to just, just take a deep dive on Martin Shepard's website. Uh, he's really compiled a, a wealth of information that, that really made this possible. So I want to thank him. And of course, there's all the other works cited. And, you know, you can deep dive and explore on your own time. If you haven't checked out the Howard Piano Podcast, be sure to do that. It's now available on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. And uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, hope you look forward to more of these in the future. We'll see you.